Well, on those wrong-headed students, uh, we've seen them across university campuses in the US, UK, right here in Australia, they'd be feeling even more emboldened by this decision by the ICC. And I wonder if uh, it'll be enough to see them remove their masks, Douglas. Uh, you wrote about this trend of anti-Israeli protesters wearing masks outdoors, and you've called on these cowards to show their faces. Yes. It was fascinating to me, you know, Rita, uh, when I was in Australia recently, I noticed that all the anti-Israel protesters all seemed to be, uh, whilst they were they were doing their thing of celebrating Hamas, they, they seemed also to be incredibly scared of COVID, Rita, very 2020. Um, uh, here uh, in New York, up at Columbia, all these students who are shouting things like, go back to Poland, to the Jewish students at Columbia, They've all weirdly, they're also terrified of respiratory viruses. Um, very interesting. <laughs> uh, same thing in the UK where the brave students at Cambridge University shout their filth and also shout it through um, uh, masks. Now, I suggest this is all bunk. They're not actually afraid of COVID whilst they're doing their bit for Hamas. They're, they know that the, what they're doing might be shameful. They know it might get them into trouble. They know that when you stand along a group, among a group of people all wearing their, their Yasser Arafat kafirs and feeling so proud of dressing up in Hamas terrorist chic, they sort of sense maybe at some point in the future this will go wrong and I might have to account for my presence here and my actions. So what do I do? I go all 2020 and I put a mask on. And the authorities... Uh, in my view, and everyone else should say, you know, in America in particular, the last group of racists who were allowed to parade through America with their faces covered were the Ku Klux Klan. Now, people used to say then, if you're so proud of your racist ideology, why don't you show your face? And it's the same thing with these students and others. I'd like them to show their faces. I show my face when I speak. You show your face, Rita. We're not afraid of being held to account for our opinions. We put them out there like anyone else who's sensible, and we expect to hold, be held to account for them. These people do not. They are acting simultaneously as radicals and cowards. It's not surprising those two things often go together, but I'd say to them, to use a phrase that might trigger them, man up, guys. Show your face. Let the world see the bigotry face to face. Well, I saw some of them when they were arrested. I think it was UCLA, it was some uh, university campus where the police made a point uh, after they put them in handcuffs to remove their masks. Um, and they did not seem to enjoy that at all. Now, uh, to the UK quickly, where the Times is reporting that police are being told to make fewer arrests because of the lack of space in prisons. Yes, chief constables are being advised to consider pausing non-priority arrests and also suspend operations that may trigger large number of arrests uh, until there is enough yes. capacity in the prison system. Uh, what could go wrong with that, Douglas? Um, I have to say, uh, the UK police advice is late. The UK police don't bother arresting anyone anyway. Uh, I, I mean, unless, obviously, for instance, you've tweeted something out about a trans uh, a child perhaps not being operated on and, and molested by uh, pervy uh, surgeons. But, uh, you know, if you have your house robbed, and I mentioned this to you before, uh, Rita, half the police forces mm. in England and Wales haven't made one arrest in recent years for burglary, not one. True. So, actually, this advice, and it's always the most ridiculous advice, that, you know, we're running out of prison places, so uh, let's just arrest fewer criminals, as opposed to it. We, we will build as many prison places as there are criminals who need to go into them. Uh, no, uh, they're worried about the number of people in prisons, and they don't need to worry. Uh, the way that the police in Britain are going, uh, the, the prisons may be filled with tweet crime people, uh, but there, are, there won't be any burglars. And of course, as we know from Sadiq Khan's London, there aren't any stabbers uh, or murderers. Uh, so um, actually, I'm amazed there's any shortage of prison spaces. I'd have thought that if you did have the, the bad luck to be locked up in Chokey in the UK these days, you'd be able to effectively hot desk it among the cells. You probably have your choice of cell uh, because most of them are empty because the police can't arrest anyone for any actual crime. Haven't bothered in years.
Uh, now, before you go, uh, I want to get your opinion on this uh, new therapy craze that seems to be uh, uh, very popular with some women who are going to the woods and just scream and bash the ground with sticks. It's called rage therapy. These uh, rage <laughs> ritual therapies can be a costly affair if you want the full package. Uh, it can cost upwards of $4,000. Uh, money well spent, Douglas? Uh, I mean, it struck me that a few of them just ought to take it out by going to the gym. Uh, um, it would be cheaper <laughs> and, um, and uh, necessary uh, not to want to body shame anyone. Uh, but there's something just... Uh, so it's a sort of civilizational breakdown thing, this. You know, um, we have somebody there saying they feel sad and another one feels afraid. I hate to break it to them, but if any of them are watching, human life is sad. Uh, it is also joyful. Uh, you are sometimes going to be afraid in your life and sometimes you won't be. You might even be brave. Um, uh, human life, one of the great things about it is it's filled with lots of emotions. But in general, it's a good idea to keep them in check and keep yourself sane. And one of the ways in which you can tell that you're not being sane is when you're standing in the middle of a wood, being rinsed for 4,000 bucks by some charlatan, smashing the ground and screaming. Uh, uh, that's a sign that you've not got it together and an overpriced stick beating on the ground session ain't gonna help you. Uh, I would argue uh, all sorts of other things could, but these are just people whose lives are not together. Uh, I wish some luck, but this isn't gonna put it together. Uh, uh, they, they are gonna have to do a lot more work than this, Rita. Yes, but at least they're outdoors in the woods uh, getting some fresh air. Let's uh, look at the positive least, side. Douglas Murray, on, thank you so at much. At least they're not online, uh, Rita. At least they're not online uh, uh, screaming like that, as many people are. At least they're doing it in the woods offline. <laughs> Precisely. Thank you, Douglas Murray. Thank you.